we are, we were inside this club and it's uh, in this basically this big city that's kind of like medieval Las Vegas. You guys had traveled around the city a little bit, got to know the people just a bit, and uh, you met R, played by Rana. Uh, the four of you, uh, that's Juniper, Leanna, Esme, and Violet, you got to know her a little bit and then uh, decided that you were going to go to the club to check out what it was all about. There, uh, she saw you guys enter in with a um, some kind of duke, some kind of like royal duke, uh, who allowed you guys in. He kind of let you guys cut the line because you... Um, you intrigued him enough to let him do so. He seemed like a pretty nice guy. He just kind of let you in and let you go kind of thing. Um, and you did a little bit of partying. And the music was bumping. You talked a little bit. Uh, Juniper got into a conversation with a few elves of different, um, like, they had, like, different season seasonal themes. There was an ice elf. There was a summer elf. Um, she kind of got talking with them. Uh, Liana met another Leonin who is a um, bouncer at the club. Uh, and this bouncer's name, I got it here, is Bertram, and, uh, Leanna and Bertram kind of got along and kicked out some, some, uh, rascally Kenku, uh, which are like raven people, kicked them out of the club. Um, R, you talked with Violet and Esme a little bit, and then you were all called back into a private VIP room in the back. R, you knew exactly who was back there, um, a prince. This prince was in the VIP room, and he called uh, the three of you, R, Violet, and Esme, into this back room to speak with you. And as you entered in, Violet, it was like it was like a flashback to years ago, um, as you saw Prince Lawrence sitting on a couch next to a beautiful woman, surrounded by these guards in golden armor. This is someone who pretty much tortured you as a kid in terms of um, just, uh, like, making you do stuff for his friends, like, you know, uh, do entertainment for his friends, and he's the kind of person who would make fun of you and um, made you do all the chores around the house and the kind of person who really just kind of ruined your life as a kid. Um, this was someone who uh, was part of the family that dreamt you up, uh, Violet. Um, being a, a person made of dreams, this family dreamt you up as their their perfect... Uh, little maid daughter and you were able to escape but now you stand face to face with the past a person who has tormented you for many years um, one of the most cruel people you've ever met in your life and uh, he sits there with a smirk seemingly excited to see you as you have run away uh, for a long time uh, unfortunately you guys weren't stealthy enough getting into the club to avoid the many guards and people that he had around and so spotting you You've um, you've come to face to face with one of your worst fears here as uh, this person kind of stares you and your your new friends down R and um, Esme and the guards in the VIP room are kind of surrounding you guys, not in like a super threatening way, but in a way that's going to make it hard for you to leave this room without having a conversation with Lawrence um, R. You, on the other hand, don't know all of this this previous information. Your your relationship with Lawrence is strictly business. Uh, he's someone who pays a lot of your bills. He's someone who rents out your room all the time. Someone who um, you make sure is safe at the club for the most part. And uh, you know that there are threats looming in the city that it would be really bad if Prince Lawrence was found dead on your dance floor. So um, this is a very powerful person that you would probably not want particularly um, harmed uh, in this particular sure. moment. Um, but with that said, um, Leanna, you're out on the dance floor uh, with with um, Bertram, not dancing, but you're both just kind of standing by like the guard booth and oh, that's uh, cool. and just kind of like talking with each other, you know, back and forth, Leanna. Um, but then you see uh, the your friends go into one of the VIP rooms and the door shut kind of behind them. Um, is there anything in particular you'd like to do? As you see that, Bertram's just kind of standing with you. He's got his arms crossed. He's uh, he kind of asks you while while you're looking at the door and you see the VIP room door shut with your friends inside. Um, he you kind of just hear him say, "So where are you from?" Mm, I kind of just like look at him, and I'm just like like kind of like that like oh yeah, yeah yeah I'm from here, but like I'm more interested in like what's going on over there. So I kind of like, I'm just like, hey, like, who do you usually, like, you go to this bar, you work in this bar a lot. 
So, like, who's usually going into that VIP area and, like, what goes on back there? Kind of, like, just want to know. I'm not allowed to say exactly, but I can tell you that the people who rent out those spaces are extremely wealthy. Yeah, but, like, those are just my friends. <laughs> oh, your friends went back there. They must have money then. It seems like he didn't notice. Oh, okay. No, no, no. That's fine. I totally understand. Um. I kind of want to go back there. What the heck? I don't know. Well, um, uh, there seems to be some guards at the door. Uh, are those your friends? No, I've seen those guards before. He's going to roll a history check. Yeah, that's uh, Prince Lawrence's guards. Uh, Prince Lawrence is probably back there. Uh, if your girls went back there, then they're probably back there with him. Okay, um, is it because I'm a tall giant lion lady or what? Because I want to go back there too. I want to be in VIP. I, can we try um, and get in? Can we try and get in? You can go ask the guards, but uh, I'm not going to be able to get you in. I, I have a paycheck to clear, all right? Oh, so I can't use you to help me get in. Uh, I don't think so. Unless Unless we feel like there's a problem back there, then I can step past the guards easy. Mm, you have okay. a reason to think there's a problem back there? No, I just kind of want to be with them. <laughs> I want to be in VIP. Bertram kind of like, he, he smirks as his whiskers kind of raise up a little bit. Um, and uh, he says, well, well, we can go talk to them together. How's that? That would be really great. So he, uh, he walks up, Bertram walks with you. You kind of push through the crowd over to the VIP section. Uh, on the way by, Juniper also sees you. She's dancing with these elves. Um, she, she kind of looks curiously at you and tilts her head like, what are you doing? Um, do you say anything to her? Leanna? No. Okay. But maybe I shouldn't go in the VIP. Well, mm. Juniper's your friend, you know, and she she probably didn't see the like the your friends, your other friends going into the VIP room. She probably didn't see it, so she's kind of curious of what you're doing. Like she she needs to be filled in. Oh, this okay, is, okay. This okay. is um, I want to bring her. Yeah, I want to get, get her. Oh. Okay. Oh. Mm, I would get her attention. Try okay. to like go. Okay, so you kind of wave her over and she um she kind of puts her hand on the um the summer elf who she's kind of been talking to and drinking with and the summer elf just kind of like nods her head and they they separate from their little dance circle that they've been in and juniper comes over and uh she says what's going on to you liana what are mm. you doing oh i just i'm letting her know that like hey i saw them walk in to that vip area and i heard there's a very wealthy fancy man in there i think we should go in oh we could use some money okay she kind exactly. of likes, she kind of smiles uh, and walks with you up to the guards. Bertram leads you up and introduces you. Uh, he says, uh, yeah, you uh, golden tin man. He kind of taps on one of the, the guards helmets who's standing there very stolidly and stoically um, as the, as Bertram taps on his forehead. He says, this is uh, this is Leanna and uh, someone else. This person here uh, and they apparently uh, have something they want to tell you. And uh, the guard just kind of turns towards you and, and puts his spear on the ground and waits for you to say something. Mm, uh, so, uh, um, my friends are in there. Um, I, I know, I know, I know the guy and, and uh, the people in there. Can I go in? Uh, roll me a persuasion check. All right. With an uh, 11. Excuse me. With an 11, um, as you say that to the guard, the guard kind of tilts his head at you, and then he says, <clears throat> You say you know the people in there? Uh, yeah, I do, actually. Um, those are my friends, and I think I have to be in there to talk to them about some things. And What are the names? Esme and 
Who else is in there? Who's who is just walking in there? Uh, <laughs> Nina's character, Violet. Oh, Violet. Okay, I thought Gina Parker said. And then you know of R too. You've met R, uh, R, but she's new. R and then R R's in there. See, I can remember these names. I can remember <laughs> all of them. When you mention R, um, he uh, he kind of kind of stands like upright, like you mentioned a name that he cares about, and uh, he opens the door slightly. And at this time, this is when Prince Lawrence is is addressing you guys. Um, but he stops as the door opens, and the guard says, Lady R, there are friends out here for you, Leanna and some other woman. Um, and then uh, he kind of waits for you to either wave them in or, or shoo them off. R? Yeah, just wave them in. Okay. Um, as you wave them in, uh, the guard opens the door and... Uh, Leanna and Juniper are able to come into the VIP room as Prince Lawrence, uh, his smile gets even bigger, that golden tooth kind of shining in the uh, disco-y multicolored lights that are in this room. And uh, as the door shuts, the music again kind of fades into the background and uh, you hear Prince Lawrence say, So, Violet! It's, uh, it has been a long time, hasn't it? You look as beautiful as ever. He kind of like bows a little bit while he's seated. Um, and he says, where have you been, love? I will remain stone faced as ever. Okay. And will not answer his question. Instead, I'll ask him back. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, uh, he kind of smiles and he says, same old Violet, aren't ya? Well, uh, I wanted to talk with you because mother and father have been missing you. I didn't know I'd find you here. I've been coming here for years. You've never been here before, have you? I would have seen you. What do you say? First of all, no. they're not my mom and pops. Second oh, of all, don't be like that. Well, okay, broski. Maybe I haven't been here for a while. What about that, huh? What's it to you? I mean, it's none of my business except for, um, you, uh, you took something of ours, didn't you? So... And what would that be? Um, so... You're not sure if he's talking about, like, the petty money you've stolen. You can come up, if you want, you can decide that you've stealing, stolen something from the family. Or um, maybe he's he's just blaming you for something that was stolen from the house. You're not sure. Uh, you can decide, uh, Nina, as a player, you can decide if you've actually taken something valuable of them. And you can decide what it is. Or you can decide, oh, he's just blaming you for something that isn't actually your fault. Up to you. I... I think I would take the latter. So I'm just trying to like trick question him. Okay. So um, the latter being uh, you have taken something or you haven't? Sorry. I haven't. Okay. All right. Uh, he, uh, he kind of furrows his brow and he says, Dad Scepter, the Scepter of the King. You took it on your way out. He kind of seems stone faced and like, like, serious about it, but with, like, this kind of creepy smile on his face. Didn't you? But maybe I did. Maybe I sold it in the fucking market. What are you going to do about it? He, uh, he kind of stands up, and as he does, the guards start to close in, but he puts his hand up, and they all stop with a... <laughs> their armor stops. Or, you've never seen Prince Lawrence like this before. He's normally a pretty kind of happy-go-lucky dude, um, and he seems extremely, like hostile right now and also very like uh he's not respecting you in in your in your place of work right now uh you might be muted i can't hear you sorry my bad you're good like how often is my guy you're good i kind of like turn to him um and give him like a you like one of those smiles you can give someone that's like the customer service smile, but doesn't yeah. actually mean it. And I'm like, there's no killing in my bar. Um, Prince Lawrence kind of sits back down and puts his arm around this this woman that he's next to, um, who kind of like 
slinks back in in a bit of like disgust almost um she kind of like slinks away from him a little bit um and he kind of like takes his arm off of her <clears throat> okay so this is gonna go one of two ways one you give me the scepter or you tell me where it is or two we're gonna kill everyone here but R and we'll pay you enough money R to forget about it how's that sound what what I should not have gone into this room I don't give a fuck about this <laughs> VIP room <laughs> <laughs> Leanna bursts out. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, mate. Okay. I have a third option for you. If you'd be interested. And what's that? Ooh. You could get the fucked out of my bar and never come back. Uh, roll me an intimidation check. <laughs> Violet is very attracted to that. <laughs> 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 Let's go. Wow. <laughs> 25 <laughs> intimidation. Let me let me just roll let me just roll for him just to see. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he rolled a natural one. All right. Are you serious? He uh he kind of like crosses his legs like like he's peeing himself a little. <laughs> he kind of like leans forward. Um the girl next to him starts kind of like snickering. Um as one of the guards begins kind of moving out of formation. Uh, Prince Lawrence stamps his foot on the ground, uh, and as he does, the guard stops in place, and he says, uh, Prince Lawrence holds his hand up, and he says, You would do this to me, huh? After all the money I've spent here, you'd do this to me. There are plenty of people willing to take your place, and honestly, I'll take that over you, killing everyone in my bar but me. I just met these four little princesses right here. And he points to the, the four women who are uh, in front of you. I didn't mean the rest of the people. How's that sound? Is that better? No. As I said, there's no killing in my bar. Technically, we're in the VIP room. Is that not in my bar? I thought maybe. Anyway, fine. If that's the way you want it, then maybe we'll just leave. Maybe you will. He, uh, he stands up. And I'll make sure everyone knows that this place is for thieves and ruffians. Can How's I, that sound? As he says that, can I just, like, throw a punch at him? <laughs> sure. Uh, roll me an unarmed strike. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay. Okay, unfortunately, a six, a six is, uh, is not going to hit. As you, as you go to punch, um, we'll say uh, one of the guards who's standing next to him just steps in the way as you punch his armor. Uh, and Prince Lawrence kind of takes a step back and he stumbles over the couch and falls backwards. As he does, he kind of like rubs his head and the, the girl on the couch is like snickering pretty, like pretty uh, loudly. And he says, why don't you shut up? He kind of points to the woman and she, she kind of like almost instinctively it gets real quiet. Um, and uh, from there he says, let's go, everyone, let's go. And the guards kind of uh, about face. Um, the, the lady kind of gets up from the, from the couch and starts walking out with them. Um, do you guys want to do anything? Uh, I just want to say bye, Brewski. Say hi to mom and dad for me. Okay. Damn. All right. Um, as you say that, he's got kind of his, his hand on the, on the VIP door as you say that. And uh, he stops. His, his back is facing you. And mm. uh, he's got he's like his hand on the handle. And he turns around just, just, just about halfway just so you can see his eyes. And he says, Mom and Dad are going to come find you. You know that, right? They do. I've been in hiding my whole life. Surprised they haven't found him yet. Well, now they're going to have a lead. I've always had a big mouth. I know. Not in good use, though. 
he uh he kind of smiles a bit and he starts like he's just like standing in front of the door like not not leaving he's like standing in the way but like facing away from you like he's thinking um r you can hear the sound of like a a tussle outside your outside of the vip room um but you're not really sure exactly what's happening you just hear like a and then like some some armor clashing Okay, um, I'm gonna try to like push past Prince Lawrence, and as I pass him, I say, "Well, if you have a big mouth, perhaps you'd want to maybe seek employ in one of the brothels. I'm sure you'd be very popular." And then I like head out to okay. see what's going on. All right. Um, as you open the door, uh, you see the there are two guard the two guards that were at the front of the door um, have their spears crossed in front of the VIP room. Uh, and as they, it seems like they're like, they're blocking the tussle that's happening outside the door. They're blocking like whatever's happening outside the door from getting into the VIP room. They're not like, they're not like blocking you in or anything, um, but they have the, the spears in front of the door. You can see, uh, like a few patrons of the bar, like rolling around on the ground. Um, they look like just like regular people who are kind of rolling around outside the, outside the door. And, uh, Bertram comes over and grabs one of them by the scruff and, pulls him up off the other one and like kind of bear hugs him and drags him out uh, one side door of the bar. Um, and as he does, uh, Prince Lawrence says, you know what? Fuck this. I'm bored. Kill them all. And as he does that, the guards slam the door shut in your face, Rana. Uh, or it like slams in, into your nose and like almost breaks your nose as you, as you take a step back and pop your nose back into place. And I need everybody to roll initiative as you have incurred the wrath of a very narcissistic, egotistical man baby. Like a good prostitute. (laughs) (laughs) Egotistical man baby is not happy. Which one is it? Uh, Initiative. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah, initiative. It's uh, up by your armor class. If Esme is a little schmizzed. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. It's not going to affect your okay. your rules. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. What? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, I've read their things. You can't keep, like, your family business to yourself. Oh, my goodness. Oopsies. <laughs> 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 All right. These are uh, not great ro- rolls for you guys, <laughs> unfortunately. All right, let's go ahead and drag you guys over to the map. This is the most like off guard we've ever been, I think. Yeah. Yeah, which often happens with people who have baby little temper tra- tantrums like Prince Lawrence. All right. I think I am good to go. All right, dragging you guys over to the map. On roll 20, you'll see the map. You're going to have to scroll down probably to see it. Oh, I'm in the best position. (laughs) All right, so let me make sure... Things look good on my... All right. Um, As the disco lights around are spinning in circles, um, Esme, you do feel a bit bit kind of dizzy just from the lights and the liquor, but um, the, the excitement of combat is flushing all of that out of you. Um, as you are rearing to go, um, and Prince Lawrence is going to go first as he, out of his scabbard, pulls out a short sword. Seems like, um, this is something that, um, are, you may want to look into, um, later in your, um, later in your, uh, time. One of your guards seems to have not, um, not, uh taken his weapons like they normally do. Normally they take the noble's weapons, 
um, so that they, they have like private lockers that they put them in. Uh, but Lawrence either paid one of them off or um, he just got by. You're not sure. Um, but he's holding on to this sword and uh, he points it at you, R, and he says, You could have just taken the fucking money. And he's going to roll an attack. It's a 18 to hit. Or five points of slashing damage from Prince Lawrence. As the guards circle in, it is their turn. Each of them has a spear. They actually don't go, um, they don't like, um, they, they don't, they're still also caught a little off guard because, of course, Prince Lawrence made this decision kind of like on a whim. Um, so they're caught a little bit off guard. Um, so on this first attack, they're going to have disadvantage um, as they're kind of like half swinging their, their uh, spears at you and trying to prod at you. Um, Liana, the first one, is going to miss you. Juniper... Uh, also going to get missed with a 5. Esme. This one's a 15 to hit you. Esme, what is your armor class? Um, 14. Okay. So that is going to be... Uh, 4 points of piercing damage from the spear. And Violet's... Uh, that is going to be an 18 to hit you with disadvantage. And that's going to be five points of damage, Violet. All right. Violet, it's your turn. You're surrounded by uh, by guards. Prince Lawrence up by R at the front of the room next to the door to exit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll attack this guard right here. Wait, how do I? Click and hold. Click and hold. Kicking and go. holding. Got it. That one? Yep. With my psychic blade. You got it. Go ahead and roll the psychic blade attack. 23 is going to hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay. All right. And you do have an ally within five feet, so you are going to get that 12 sneak attack damage for a total of 20. As you bring the dagger down on this guard, um, you kind of bring it down onto his throat, and he begins kind of bleeding out of his nose, and he lets out a... uh, uh, And he keels over with 20 damage there. Noise. You've opened yourself a little space here, and uh, that's going to bring us to Esme. Um, I'll go ahead and attack this one right here. All right. My short sword. You got it. You pull out your little miniature short sword and go for a stab. As you do, it kind of clangs off of the armor, unfortunately, with that attack. It's going to miss. Um, As a bonus action, you can still disengage here. Um, if you want, uh, so that's the that's the rogue feature called um, I forget what it's called. Um, it's got a name, but anyway, you can bonus action disengage and kind of fly away from these guards if you want to. You can move where you want on the map. Um, unless you want to be here. Oh God. Can I? Oh, I feel like I should stay. I'll stay. I'll stay. All right. That's gonna bring us to R then. Okay, I'm thinking. Uh, <laughs> You're good. Okay, uh, I'm gonna. Okay, so I, I'm looking at my you know, the dagger I have. I think it's an action to actually coat it in poison, so maybe that's not the best idea to do right now. Um, I will get my hand axe out then. All right. Swing it at the guard nearest All to right. me. All um, right. Oh my god, I'm rolling dog shit. That wasn't that one. <laughs> Unfortunate. Unfortunately, uh, that's going to miss, uh, obviously. And uh, as you bring the hand axe across, the guard just kind of clangs it out of the way with his spear. Um, and Prince Lawrence lets out a, a very narcissistic, annoying laugh. Um, would you believe- like to move or have any bonus actions you would like to do? I have drain life with my bonus action. And it doesn't say I have to hit. It just says when I use an attack or a spell. Action. Will you read it? Really? Read it to me. What does it say? Um, it says, when you use an attack action or cast a spell, you can use a bonus action on the same turn to make a melee spell attack against the creature within five feet of you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. 
Uh, uh, 10 is also going to miss, unfortunately. <laughs> Fuck. Unfortunate. Um, yeah, yeah. That's going to bring us to Liana, unless you want to try and disengage out of here. Or, or I'm not, like not disengage if I move, with though, they're just going to... They all both get bonus attacks on me, so... Uh, opportunity attacks, so I'm going to stay. Okay. Probably. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Liana, you are up. Um, okie dokie. Can you give me who's around me real quick? We're in this. You We're are starting. here. You're the yellow. Okay. Where are you pointing? Can you see the pings? If you scroll down on the map, can you see us? On roll 20. Oh, yeah, there it is. We zoomed in too much. I was looking at a corner and I was like, where are you guys at? <laughs> You're good. So you got a guard to your right and Prince Lawrence in front of you. Uh, but he's mm. like he's like ten feet away, so you'd have to you just have to take a step forward, but you can do it easily. Okay. I'm gonna take a step forward. Alright. And then I'm gonna swing at him with everything I got because he's pissing me off. Alright. So you you may move your token. You can move her forward one square, and then uh, we'll roll your attack with your weapon of choice. Okay. Twenty-three at the great axe is gonna hit. Yes, thank you. Now, would you like to smite as well? Do you want to use one of your smites? I do. Okay, so you can pick whatever smite you want off your spell list, or you can do just the classic divine smite, which is I think two d eight radiant damage. But yeah, uh, you can look on your spell list. You might have another different smite on there. Otherwise, um... yeah, I have compelled dual hellish rebuke and inflict wounds. Okay, so you don't have the smite on there, so it would need to be rolled from... Let me see where the 2d8 thing is. On your character sheet. Leanna. Okay. Um... Divine Smites. Okay, I think you might have to just roll these um, yourself. So, um, first thing to do when you do a Divine Smite is to mark off um, one of your spell slots because it does cost a spell slot. So, go to your spell list and then click on one of those boxes. The top right. Okay. The oh, first yeah, level box. I had box. one already uh, marked off. Yep, yep. So, mark one more off. Okay. And then um, go ahead and... In roll 20, where your rolls kind of show up, in the little the little chat bubble, or chat box at the bottom right, Yep. do forward slash roll, and then the number 2, a lowercase d, and an 8. It's 2d8. Because that's how much damage you get to do, so forward slash roll, 2d8. Oh, nice. Okay, so you're going to get 8 extra damage on top of your great axe damage. Bet. Now, last thing we got to do is roll your great axe damage. So if you go back over to D&D Beyond... And you roll that great axe damage is under your actions. You click on the 1d12 plus 3. Next to your great axe. Nice. 16 points of damage to Prince Lawrence on your turn. As you bring the great axe across, it slashes across Prince Lawrence's back. And uh, he he lets out a, a whimpering... <laughs> um... And he uh, does not seem like he realizes what he's gotten himself into. And then would you like to do anything else on your turn? What else can I do? Um, if you go... So you're in your actions tab right now. If you go to bonus action, you can see... Um, you could do Daunting Roar, which is... Um, creatures of your choice within 10 feet of you that can hear you must succeed on a... DC 13 wisdom saving through or become frightened of you until your next turn. Okay, I'll do that one. All right, go ahead and click on the little box under Daunting okay. Roar. There we go. And then Prince Lawrence rolls a 10. The guard next to Rana rolls a 8. And the two other guards within 10 feet of you, uh, one is going to succeed, the other is going to succeed. Okay. 
So, uh, Prince Lawrence and the guard above you are frightened of you, which means they're going to have disadvantage on their attacks as long as they can see you. Which is good for you guys. We're going to put a frightened symbol, which is going to be... Um, we're going to put purple. Purple dots. All right. And then that is going to bring us to Juniper, who is going to transform into a basilisk and she is going to before she transforms she actually says hey prince lawrence and he kind of like turns around and then she transformed to a basilisk so that she can try and turn him into stone and prince lawrence is going to fail so prince lawrence's feet begin to turn to stone on Juniper's turn. Uh, Prince Lawrence is then going to make his attack with disadvantage on R. Uh, probably still going to hit with a 16, maybe? 16 going to hit your R? Sorry, I'm mute to sneeze, and I keep forgetting to unmute. Oh, yeah. you did. Oh, my armor class is 13, so... Okay, yeah, so that's going to be... A total of 8 points of slashing damage with the sword as he brings it across... And uh, he is going to roll his save. <laughs> okay. He rolls a 13, which is... Uh... Can I um, hellish rebuke him on this, by the way? Is yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, this... Liana, okay. you have hellish rebuke too. So um, that is, if you get hit with an attack, Liana, you can um, spend your last spell slot here. Uh, to deal 2d10 damage to somebody if you want to. Okay. It's like a it's like a reverse Uno card on somebody if they hit you with an attack. Ooh. All right, so he needs to make a DC something save. What's your save? Save. It needs uh, to beat 14. 14? You rolled a yeah. 7. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, how, how, do you, how do you want to kill Prince Lawrence? Pr oh. Prince, Prince of uh, the Kingdom of Midas. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I guess um, I, I, I guess like um, kind of R's eyes kind of go like, uh, kind of. This is kind of like dark, um, and she kind of like mutters in a sort of different, like darker tongue. And if anyone knows any of the the demon languages, and like Prince Lawrence, kind of like, I don't know. Uh, I he, he kind of like goes up in like a ball of like reddish like purple flames okay so d is there anything left of him or is he just ash um i mean <laughs> up to I you i imagine there's probably something less there's probably just like a charred just like a, a charred corpse so yeah. <laughs> uh, as he hits you with the sword it does deal some damage to you but you kind of turn your head and as you do your eyes flare up and that um, what you described happens as it swirls around him, the fiery purple flame engulfs him, and he lets out a Aah! And as he does, his entire skin evaporates into nothing but soot and ash, leaving uh, mostly just muscle and bone fall to the floor charred as the guards continue their assault. The first guard is going to attack you with disadvantage, R. And that one's also going to hit, so 17 and a 19. <laughs> So that one's going to deal six points piercing. Okay. I am not looking great. I'm not going to lie. Liana, guard behind you, is going to attack you with a 16 to hit. Liana, what's your armor class? Uh, 16. 16? Okay, so that is going to hit you for seven points of piercing damage. And this one's going to move up here, and he's going to attack you as well. He's going to miss, though. And then we got two attacks on Esme, two attacks on Violet, and two attacks on Juniper the Basilisk. We're going to roll two attacks on Juniper. Both of those are going to hit. Four, three, and five points of damage. Esme, two attacks on you. Uh, one's going to miss with a natural one. The other one's going to maybe hit. Is 14 hit? Uh, 
My armor class is a 14. Okay, so it will hit. A, me- a meat does a meat okay, does okay. beat it, yeah. Okay. All right, so that one's going to be six points piercing. Okay. And then two more spears attacks on Violet's. Uh, another natural one and a 13. What's your armor class, Violet? 15. Okay, so it's going to miss as the spear kind of glances off of your leather armor. And that's going to bring us to your turn, Violet. All right. I will gladly attack this one here. Yeah. With a psychic blade. You got it. 23 again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Eight and nine. Nicely done. Okay. So that is going to be... Uh, 17 points of damage to that guard. All right. And then... uh, That's going to bring us to... Did you want to uh, move at all? If you would like to, you can bonus action, disengage, and kind of move yourself to a a better location if you want. Yeah. uh, who, Who is the most injured here? Of your party? Yeah. R. Yeah. Okay, I'll move closer to her. Okay. Prince Lawrence is dead, so I can move his body out of there. <laughs> R.I.P. Oh, I have something planned for his body later, but for okay. now. All right. I'll, I'll move here. All right, sounds good. You are moved. Uh, Esme, you're up. Mm, oh, God. Can I try to get this guard next to me again? Yeah. <laughs> Uh... <laughs> is the one that I put the red dot on the one you attacked, Violet? Yes. Okay, cool. He is, right. he's like bleeding out. He's like almost dead. I guess I'll try my sword again. All right. Yeah, 16 That's is going to hit, just better. barely. <laughs> oh, okay. Nine, 18 points of damage. Nicely done. Yeah. All right, as you slash this guard, <laughs> he takes 18 points of damage, and he also begins to bleed out. Oh, let's go. And would you like to move at all? Um, If I can move next to, or like on Juniper, like around yeah. her. Yeah, so okay. if you hold alt, you can move your character onto Juniper's square. Um, like click and drag holding the alt key, and then you can put her wherever you want. And I'll put Juniper okay. to the back. There you go. Yeah, yeah. okay. All right, so you get on the back of the basilisk, and uh, R, you're up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if I eldritch blast this guy, will I do it at disadvantage because it's a ranged spell attack? Correct. Um, I think that arm is quite high, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna bop him with my hand axe. Though. All right. Seven's gonna um, miss, unfortunately. What is with my rolls? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> It's okay, we're getting him out early. <laughs> All right, um, that is your yeah. action. Any bonus action or movement that you want to do? Uh, yeah, I'll try and drain life again then. Yep. So I need to 16 is going to hit. Go ahead and roll the nice. drain life damage. Seven necrotic. And did you heal for all seven of that? Um, I'm not sure it heals me. Oh, it doesn't? Um. I just assumed with the words drain life, it would heal. Yeah, I thought so too, but reading it, I think it just does necrotic damage. Okay. Uh, I mean, that, I guess that also makes sense. How does yeah. that look when you do that, do you think? What, the drain line? Yeah, yeah. How does it look? I'm not like actually you... sure. Um, do you think it would be, like, blood-related? Probably, yeah. Okay. So, um, as you kind of put your hand out, you just, like, put your hand on his, on his golden mask, and as you do, so you see these, like, these, like, wisps of blood kind of coming out of his face um, as they come out of the, the slits where his eyes are for the armor. They kind of come out and they, like, go under your fingernails and you drain some of his life out. And that's going to bring us to Liana. Okie dokie. You got an injured guy. Everyone who's got a red dot on them is injured, so... Injured, injured. Um, I'm gonna hit the dude to the right of me. Yep, the one who's full health. The, uh... Can I hit the one below him? The yeah. one that's, like, weaker? Okay, I'm gonna hit yep. him. You're still within five feet there, yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna hit him. With... Uh, 
I guess the... How much is the inflict wounds? Like, what's that? It's a, it's a spell that deals, I think, necrotic damage. Um, yeah, 3d10 necrotic damage. It's just a, a high damaging spell. So it would do more on average than your your axe, but it also costs a spell slot to use, so. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. So you're marking off your last spell for inflict wounds? Yeah. All right. 19's going to hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Yes. 17. And you did it on the one with the red dot on him? Mm-hmm. All right. He is dead. As you cast Inflict Wounds on him, he... Have you ever seen Harry Potter, like, the Cruciatus Curse, where they, like, they like, like curl up and their bones start to break? That's basically what Inflict Wounds does when it kills somebody. It, like... <laughs> he, like, curls up into a ball. And it's going to bring us to Juniper, who's going to bite as a basilisk on the injured guard. She's going to hit, and he only has two HP, so he is dead. Which is going to bring us to the guard's turns. Uh, one guard is going to attack you, R. He still has disadvantage because he can see Liana. Uh, he is rolling a 12. Does a 12 hit? Nope. 12 doesn't hit. All right. Uh, Liana, the guard next to you, to your right, is going to attack you with a 18 to hit for four points of piercing damage, Liana. Four points. Uh, Esme, since you're on the back of the Basilisk, this guard's going to attack you. Uh, that one's going to miss. And then these four guards are going to step up. One. All right. Two more attacks on Liana. Uh, one of them is a natural 20, which is going to crit for 19 points of piercing damage, Liana. It's a big one. So one attack is going to hit you for 19. The other one uh, is going to, I believe, miss with a 14 on dice. So... Natural 20 is going to deal 19 to you. And then uh, two more. One on Juniper and one on Esme. Uh, natural one on Esme and a hit on Juniper for five points of damage. And that is going to bring us to Violet. Okay, so... Guards are still pretty vicious. Um, all right, I'm going to attack this one here. The one right and... behind you. I'm gonna try to... Oh, behind me. So I, I can turn around easily, right? Yeah, easy. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna attack them with my Psychic Blade. And then can I attack them again as a bonus action? Mm -hmm. Because I just read that I can do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, you sure may. Okay, so I'm gonna do that first. Oh, All right, fuck, so the first attack's God. gonna miss. Go for the second right. attack with your offhand dagger. Also gonna miss, oh. unfortunately. <laughs> Jesus! That was, that was okay. a three and a, and a one. That's unfortunate. Unfortunate. <laughs> um, as those Pain. two attacks miss, uh, that's going to bring us to Esme. Okay, I'll go for this this dude. Yep. R, you're Amazing. on deck. And then Liana. My bow? Mm-hmm. Oof. Unfortunate. Unfortunately gonna no. miss. If you would like, you can uh, bonus action, uh, you can attack with your dagger if you want. Um, since you... That's uh, fine. Do you want to do that? Yeah. Okay. okay, I'll do that. Okay, roll your dagger. No! What are these rolls, guys? Come on! No! This is how you die to a bunch of guards in a VIP room. Stop. No, no, no. no. We'll die. see what happens. We'll see what happens. R, you're up. If I were to grapple the guard in front of me, uh, would he be able to hit me still? Technically, yes. Okay. Um, then I'm just gonna bop him then. You got it. All right. 18's gonna hit. Nice. He's already taken seven damage. Seven plus eight. Okay. He's almost um, dead. And then 
I'm gonna try and drain life with my bonus right. action again. Yep, you got it. Go ahead and roll damage. Yeah, you got him. Nice. With, <laughs> lastly, with the drain life, you're able to drain the last bit of his vi vitality essence out of him. And then I'm gonna move yep. away. <laughs> like, yeah. All right, Leanna, you're up. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I kicked my internet on accident, and I thought you were trying to like talk to me, and I was so embarrassed. Was oh like, no, 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 you're good. <laughs> um, okay, you, cool. Did you hear that you took some damage? Uh, yeah. Uh, it was like four, right? Uh, you took four and then you took 19. Are you and, serious? Yep. Took 19 in one hit. It was a crit. But okay, it is I'm your turn one. for I'm some one. payback. I'm at one. Oof. Um, All right. Uh... If I drink, it's, it's not like Skyrim. I can't like drink water and like heal, right? <laughs> uh, water isn't going to do it, no. Um, you have your own healing um, as a paladin. You have what's called Lay on Hands. And so you have 20 points of healing that you can give to yourself. I would like to do that. Okay. So you have this Lay on Hands pool. Go to your Features and Traits tab in your, in your big box. That big bottom right box. Go to Features and Traits. Oh, okay. Found it. And then... You see the lay on hands? It says yes. current uh, 20 and it's got a plus and minus button. Just hit the minus all the way down to zero. And then hit confirm. Okay. All right. Then... So that is your action. Uh, and then you, you're kind of stuck there, I would say for now. Um, but you do have a bunch of allies around and Juniper's looking pretty good. I think Violet's looking okay. Let's see how uh, things go. Yeah, okay. All right. Basilisk attack from Juniper on the guard in front of you, Liana, and that one is going to hit for 11 points of damage. So this guard's going to take 11. And that is going to take us to the guards. We're going to get two attacks onto the Basilisk. One's going to miss, one's going to hit. All right. Juniper takes five. Esme, two attacks on you. Uh, one's going to miss, one's going to hit for a 19. And that's going to be... Three points of piercing damage. <laughs> and then okay. Violet. We're going to be having an attack on you. It's going to be a 22 to hit for five points of piercing Ow. damage. Ouchie. And then Liana. You've got a miss coming at you and an 18 to hit for five points of piercing damage. So Liana, you take five. And that's going to bring us to Violet. All right. I'm going to try that bitch again. Hacha! <laughs> no. Psychic Blade did not work. Wait, can I do a second one again? Yep. Okay. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> what is the- what are these rolls? No! <laughs> They're all oh so God. low. Try refreshing the page. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's, <laughs> that's superstition, but you can try it. Um, I'm gonna do that actually. Esme. I think it's because last time we rolled so high and now it's punished. Yeah, <laughs> I used all my luck. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Esme, you're up. Uh, I'm gonna go for the same same person. You got it. Oh God, we'll try the bow again. Come on. Oh. Okay, yeah, go ahead and roll your damage. Um, next oh, time, for future reference, when you do a when you do a ranged attack while there are people around you, you have to roll twice and take the lower number. But we'll, we'll okay. give it to you this time. Okay. Since got you're it, tiny. Got it, got it, got it. All right, so it's going to be seven points to this guy. All right. 
And then if you want, you can do your offhand dagger attack. Uh, to the same guy? Sure. Or it could be like a different person? Sure. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. So I'll, I'll get, I'll try this dude. All right. right uh, the arrow what? sinks into the first guy. The dagger sinks into the second guy. Go ahead and roll damage on the dagger. All right. So this offhand one is going to be... Let's see. All right. Doing the math in my head. All right. So just to let you know, the offhand dagger, um, we subtract a little bit of the damage from it because it is your offhand. It's your bonus action attack. So it's... Um, not going to be quite as much damage. It's going to end up being uh, a total of four damage instead of six damage. Okay. So it loses your proficiency bonus. And then it's going to be... Uh, I think it's R. Yeah, R is up next. E. I'm going to Eldritch Blast. Uh, which one? Uh, probably the one nearest to me. I can't, I didn't have to do the click thing. Um, this guy. All right. Um. What? 11 is going to miss, unfortunately. Um. I can life drain him, though, because I have cast a spell. If I go up to him. No, I'm not going to go up to him. That's a bad idea. Uh, I'm just going to stay here, then. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to bring us to Liana. Juniper is up after that. Liana, you got a bunch of injured dudes around you and a couple full health guys next to you. You might be muted, Shark. Ooh, or was the internet cut off? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely possible. Savage Beast Queen, thank you for the three gifted. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Wex, thank you for the gifted to Shark. My internet got kicked. Okay, okay, I see. All right. Um, we will... I'll just roll her attacks then, because I pretty much know how they work. All right, yes. Great Axe is going to hit. Nice. We got a D12. Plus three. Oh, nice. Okay. Big 12s, big 12s. That's going to kill this guy. You guys' goal right now is just get the numbers down of these guys, because the less of them there are, the less attacks you're going to be getting hit by. Just pinning them down one by one. Juniper is going to roll an attack on the guy that you hit with your bow. And as the Basilisk, she's going to bite into him and deal a good amount of damage there. And that's going to bring us to the guards as two of them are going to attack her. Both going to miss this time. One on you, Esme. Uh, also going to miss. What the heck? All right, uh, roll on Violet. What the frick? Okay, uh, I guess I'm not going to hit anybody this round. Okay, I think I hit Leanna. Yes, for five. So she's she healed for 20. Now she is down to 11. I can't on my phone. I just broke my freaking USB thing that connects my Wi-Fi to my computer. Oh, God. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us? I don't know. Let me try and connect it. Hello. Can, can you hear us? Can you roll for me? Yeah, I, I got you. Fix this. <laughs> yeah, I got you. All right. So we got the guards done. Violet, you're up. Hey, psychic blades again on. Come on. Come on. We got this. Come on. Okay. Let me use my religion to help me. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya Allah. Okay. <laughs> 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 the god says no. No. <laughs> Bonus action. Okay. What are... Fucking hell. I'm increasing by one number. Every each time. time. Yeah. 10 and 11. 12, 13. Oh my god. 7 okay. and 5. Wait. Yes, I gotta wait for like three or four more rounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's ridiculous. <laughs> this is so funny. Okay. Um, Esme, you're up. Oh. Uh, Go for... Wait, so the red marks are the damage ones, yep, right? Correct. Okay, I'll go over here. Okay. I will use my sword. 
please. Oh my god. Oh man, these rolls are gonna get people in lots of trouble here. Um, you can still do your offhand dagger attack if you want. Okay. 19's gonna hit. Okay. Alright, so that's gonna be fine on that guy. Okay. And then R. Time to pull through R. Lost him again. This man. Alright. Um. A uh, natural one. <laughs> oh, what's happening? This is really bad. Oh, what's going on? Um. Alright, do you want to move or bonus action at all? Uh, I'll move even further away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Leanna's gonna hit. Okay, Leanna hits. Did I hit? Because yep. did you see the photo that I posted? I keep hitting, okay, I have this thing that connects my computer to my Wi-Fi. It's a little like USB thing. And I keep kicking it and it's like slowly breaking. And I'm so sorry. But no, did it's you okay. I tried connecting from my phone. Did you it's, hear me? When yeah, I yeah, it? we can hear you. Okay, cool. thank you, thank you. Yeah, you're good, no worries. Um, We are, You've you've already killed another person since you've been gone. Nice. Since you've been gone, <laughs> yeah. the same thing. I can't breathe for the first time. All right, let me roll your damage here. Yes. All right, nine damage on this guy. Gonna be enough to take him out. And that's gonna bring us to Juniper with a bite onto the other guy that she bit before. Finally gonna finish him off. Nicely done. All right, that leaves three guards left. Uh, one's going to make an attack on Leanna. It's going to be a 15 to hit. I don't think that hits Leanna. Nope, she has a 16. Okay. Uh, next one's going to attack Esme. A 14 to hit. What's your armor class? Is it 14? Yes. Unfortunate. But you take minimum damage, which is three. And then last one's gonna go on Juniper, and that one's also gonna hit and knock her out of Basilisk form. So she's back to being regular Juniper. And Violet, you're up. Three guards left. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try something different. Oh. Instead of the psychic blade, I'm gonna use my dagger. Oh. Okay. Fancy schmancy. Oh, <laughs> oh never mind. <laughs> All right, now, now here's the trick exact. offhand psychic dagger. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's better, that's better, I guess. Just barely missed it. Just barely missed it. Six, oh, 16 yeah. was the number you needed. Oh. No. It's okay, it's okay. The, I, you are. Bro really fucked me up mentally. Roll me a performance check, please. Okay, yes, we'll definitely do that. With a 13, let me roll for the guard here. All right, this guard that's in front of you is like. He's like, damn, you are a pretty good dancer. He's, as you're like, <laughs> slashing back and forth. He seems impressed, okay. which is going to give him disadvantage on his attacks against you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> Esme, you're up. Alright, let's go for... Ooh, this dude. Alright. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to start with my dagger, too. All right. Because that's, that's the trick, I guess. Alright. Please. Oh, come on. Unfortunate. Life is so hard. <laughs> Life is suffering and pain. I love how Prince Lawrence died within a heartbeat yeah. and all these guards are way harder to yeah. fucking fight. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh, you can do your offhand dagger as well if you want. No! I'm sorry, guys. R, you're up. So <laughs> yeah, I'm just going again. You got it. Please, you going for the injured one? Fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen as many 11 and 12s as I've ever seen yeah. in my life. Like, this is absolutely ridiculous. I got, I got nothing else. Um, <laughs> That's alright. <no. laughs> uh, yeah. Leanna, are you back enough that you want to roll or do you want me to keep rolling for you? I can roll. Okay, you go for it. You got an uninjured guard next to you. Natural 20, baby. Nice. All right. That's what we're looking for. Go ahead and roll your damage and add 12 to it, please. Because 12 is the dice. Or, oh, the equal one. Never mind. The equal was different. 
Ikawa gets... And so roll your damage and then add eight. Roll your damage for the equal and then add eight. So seven plus eight, that's uh, 15. All right, so this guard takes 15 damage. Nice. All right. Then that's going to bring us to Juniper, who is going to attempt to magic stone that guard you just hit for 15. She is going to hit... And she rolls a D8 here. We need a five. Come on, baby. Five. We got a six. Boom. Stone on the ground. A piece of the uh, the tile beneath you goes flying off of the floor and smashes the guard in the face. Killing him. Last two guards here. One attack on Juniper. One attack on Esme. Esme is going to hit you for four points. Okay. And then Juniper is going to get hit for nothing. Oof. She misses. Yes. All right. Violet, you're up. There's two guards left. Redeem okay. yourself. Come on. Redeeming. Okay. Uh, can I move to yep. here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, within five feet of reach, I will use my rapier. There you go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, oh, baby! I, mean, I see improvement. I see improvement. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for. <laughs> you pulled out every single thing out of my pockets today. There you go. <laughs> you pulled out all the whole arsenal of weapons. Go ahead and roll the damage. <laughs> okay. All nice. right. Nice. 13 damage. And then you have your offhand as well that you can do. Yes, I will try my psychic blitz just, just for the funsies. Oh, okay. Unfortunate, but that's okay. Yeah. Big hit, big hit. Thirteen's good. All right, Esme, you're up. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, we'll do. I'm, I'm, I'm being bold, but let's do dagger. Again. I like bold. Fifteen just gonna miss. I cannot believe this. Barely missed. <laughs> No! No! <laughs> Robbed! Robbed! R! Take it home! <laughs> Eldritch Blast! Eldritch Blast! Woo! Yeah, baby! <laughs> what does your Eldritch Blast look like? Have we talked about this yet? Um, It's probably like the same as like my Palace of Butte Flames, like red and purple. And red and purple as the blast comes out. And which one are you targeting? Uh, this dude. All right. He dead. Yay. As you blast him, his armor clatters to the ground. And did you want to move or anything? Um, I'll leave a little bit. All right. Leanna, you want to try and take us home? We got one guard with uh, seven HP left. Okie dokie. Um, Taking a step my... forward and doing what you gotta do. What okay. were you gonna use? I'll do the Warhammer. You got it. Go ahead and roll your Warhammer attack. 15 is just gonna miss, unfortunately. No! Juniper <laughs> gonna try and take it home. She rolls a 9. Guard gets a turn. Right. I got this. I got this. <laughs> All right. We're going to see as the guard's going to attack Esme once more. The little fairy flying in front of his face. He goes to stab it with the spear, but you fly around the tip of the spear and it misses. Oh, thank God. Violet. Woo! Okay. The only thing I haven't done yet, my short sword. I'm going to try that one. All right. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah! yeah! Natural 20, baby! Yeah! You want a way to finish it off! Yeah! How do you want to do it? Oh my god! I will stab this motherfucker in the fucking neck! The <laughs> short sword <laughs> in, into the neck, the guard falls over, keels over, the, the <laughs> VIP room is strewn with bodies, R. <laughs> <laughs> Get clean off in here now. <laughs> as uh, as the the combat kind of comes down to a settle, uh, you all look around at the bodies, and in that moment, you 
feel a sense of triumph, Violet, um, at at a, a tormentor of your life being uh, removed from it. But on the other hand, you also feel an intense amount of dread as you realize everyone in the room realizes there will now be some kind of consequence if it is found out that Prince Lawrence died here. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I've messaged you, by the way, Commander. Okay. Asking a couple of questions. All right, let me go check him out real quick. Meanwhile. Really slaughtered him, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, give me a second here, let me. Is there a cup of, like, any alcohol nearby? If so, I will take it and chuck the whole thing down and pour the last drops on his body. There you go. <laughs> okay yeah i'm down with that um shark were you gonna rejoin us in zoom or should i remake the um the things on my stream the uh whatever it called camera boxes oh i can hit it on the zoom let me click on the thing no worries thank you and then once you're in here i'll have all my stuff all right um let's see let me read these questions real quick from rana okay so blah, blah, blah. yes yes um, mm hmm, mm hmm, and one D6. Let me points. This is after this, my personal good sub levels. Uh, yes, uh, definitely possible, Rana, uh, for you to do that. And then, um, yeah, easily enough, I'll say, uh, you got a couple, couple packs of those items to help you <laughs> with your stuff. And then, uh, does it have, uh, yeah, I would say so. I would say it does have a way of disposing okay. of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, uh, picking up here as the, um, the first problem to realize here is that outside this door are two of his guards, uh, who have been waiting for for this battle to finish, um, they kind of locked you in here. Two of his golden guards are waiting out on the on the um, like the dance floor outside the VIP <laughs> room. So, um, how do you want to handle able, this, guys? You know, with disguise self, does it change your voice? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna disguise myself as Bertrand, as the, as a Prince Lawrence, and then okay. I'm gonna like close, I guess, the inner door to the the VIP area, and then like knock on. The outer one and be like, <clears throat> uh, it's over, please come in. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, as the uh, as the two guards open the door to the sound of Prince Lawrence's voice, uh, they see you standing before them. And uh, one of them says, well, first of all, where is everybody else in this situation? Are you guys hiding? What are you doing? Yeah, I think we should hide, probably. Right, behind everybody. that beautiful piano. Yeah, roll me a stealth check and hide behind the piano. Everybody roll me a stealth check, please. Nice. Violet 17, Esme 21, Juniper... Not good. And then Leanna's got a 14, okay. So, as you... Whoop, Slip off uh, underneath the piano to hide yourselves. The guards are going to roll their perception checks past you, are Can I, um, <clears throat> like, lock the door as they come in? The one they just came through. Are, do you want the guards to come into the room with you? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so as they open the door, they, they kind of see um, the bodies of the other guards in the room, and they, they walk in to start inspecting. Um, uh, one of them... As they enter through and you shut the door behind them, uh, one of them says, Where are the girls? Lawrence? Prince? They don't seem to have noticed. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and get like one of, one of, I guess like maybe Violet's attention. Okay. Know, from behind the piano, maybe like kind of gesture to be like, should maybe kill these guys too. <laughs> Uh, see if any of them will like um 
help me kill these big guards because I'm um, <laughs> since I can like my psychic blades go like 60 feet yeah. can I try to kill them from behind a piano yeah I'll try that sure yeah go ahead and roll the attack with advantage because they don't see you so roll twice to uh, behind okay. them oh my bad you're good all right so uh the 17 is gonna hit go ahead and roll damage Okay, so seven there, and then uh, R. What do you want to do in that same moment? Um, I'm gonna obviously move away from them as much as I can because yep. I'm quite low, and then I'm probably gonna just eldritch blast uh, one of them. All right, let me just uh, fix up the map here, and we'll just kind of put you guys where you're at here. So, Leanna. Oops. Violet. There's me. All right, and then we'll put two guards in here. Boop. Boop. This one takes seven damage. And then uh, you're going to Eldritch Blast, you said? Yeah, I'm going to move away first. All right, go ahead and roll your Eldritch Blast. All right, 23 is going to hit. Go and roll damage. 11 plus the... Seven is real close to taking that guard out. Um, the only reason I'm tracking this combat is because a lot of you guys are low, and so this might it might matter depending on what you guys do. Otherwise, I wouldn't normally track this kind of combat, and I'd just say you do it. But some of you guys are pretty low, so we'll see what happens here. Um, we're going to pick up on Leanna. Um, we're going to go back to the, the combat initiative. So Leanna, you were right after R. There's two guards left on the map here. Um, they just came in. They're the last ones. Uh, that we're waiting outside. So as they come in, they, they're they're caught off guard. You will get advantage on any attacks if you run up. Okay, I'm going to run up and hit them with my Great Axe. All right, you got it. Go ahead and roll your attack with advantage. So you can hit Shift and then hit the Great Axe, or you can just roll twice. Either one's good. All right. Uh, unfortunately, a 14 is going to miss with two nines in no. a row. As both of those... Go to hit you glare or glance off of their golden armor. Um, that's going to bring us to Juniper, who's going to magic stone, and she's going to hit for just enough three damage to kill that guard, leaving us with the guard's turn. Who's going to take his spear and he is going to throw it at you, R, with a natural twenty to hit. Yeah, that does hit for 12 points um i'm out <laughs> okay yeah. so r as the spear hits you kind of square in the clavicle um you feel the room go dark as you go unconscious um the rest of you watch as that spear hits the prince lawrence uh look-alike who's standing in the corner of the room who then turns Imagine back into r yeah. <laughs> Gets yep, as uh, as the concentration gets dropped on the spell, R turns back into herself, and the Prince Lawrence um, costume she's wearing goes away, basically, um, leaving you all with uh, the guard. Now, R is not dead. Has anyone been unconscious yet this this campaign? I don't think so. Not yet. Okay. So, um, Rana knows that uh, this happens, but I gotta explain it to you guys. So, when somebody goes unconscious, you don't die. Uh, when you go to zero hit points, you don't die. Um, you go unconscious, and what happens is, on your turn, you roll what's called a death saving throw. And it's a d20, just a standard d20 roll. You don't get any bonuses to it at all. Just a standard d20 roll. If you roll a 9 or lower, that's a fail. And if you roll a 10 or higher, that's a success. And if you get three successes, your character is alive. If you get three fails, your character is dead. Dead. Like, forever dead. So, um... You can are, do a, a crit roll just have, Yes. Just so just, if you if you roll a one, which is a crit fail, you take two fails. So that would be really bad if you rolled a one on your dice for your death saving throw. If you roll a one, that's two fails instead of one. Um if you roll a twenty, twenty, um, your character comes back to life with one HP. Mm-hmm. So um, with that said, R is unconscious, like bleeding out in the corner of the room. Um, Juniper will be able to heal her in a second, um, but first you got to take care of this guard, uh, which brings us to Violet. 
<laughs> Let me try this shit again, man. Leanna, I'm going to move your token to where it should be, which is there. Oh, go look at it. Go look at it, Commander. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> It's really sad. It's really sad. Okay, so you threw one dagger. Do you want to move it all? Um, yeah, I would like to move. Can I move here? Do you see me? Yep, Ooh. that's fine. Yeah, yeah, I'll move there. All right, Esme, you're up. Uh, you were on Violet's back, so you're within melee. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Let's attack the guard if you'd like. Yeah, I'll attack the, the guards. Yeah, that'll hit. Oh, Go finally. Roll geez. your damage. <laughs> nice. Eight points of damage to this guy. Okay. And that's going to bring us to R. Uh, roll me a death saving throw, please. I'm going to roll that through this. So on D&D &D Beyond, mm -hmm. you've turned your character to zero HP, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then click on your HP and like it should bring up the menu that's got like the three fails yeah, or like the three successes. Ball. And there should be yeah. a little red D20 in the middle. Uh, Click on that. Yes. All right. So a nine is going to be one failure. One failure. Leanna, you're up. R's bleeding out in the corner of the room. Time to kill this guy. Okie dokie. <laughs> um, I'm going to use Warhammer. You got it. Go ahead and roll your damage. Or roll your attack, I mean. 21 is going to hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Nice! Nicely done as you take this guy out with the Warhammer, you just crush his armor in as his body crumples to the ground. And Juniper, it's perfect timing because she runs over here and she's going to heal you R with a healing word. Or a healing, uh, whatever it's called. Uh, let me pull it up here. Spell list. Cure wounds, there we go. Alright, it's six healing for you, six healing. You. And you're back you up. Wake now, up and like pull the spear out of me. <laughs> yeah, you wake up and you pull the spear out. Um, Juniper then kind of cauterizes your wounds with the cure wounds. And you're all pretty worse for the wear, but you survived a pretty tough combat. Good job, girls. Nicely done. God, our <gasps> wow. That would have been much easier if your rolls had been good. Oh, honestly. <laughs> Unlucky. But you guys made it through and... Um, you're all, you know, nobody has, you know, taken any mortal wounds or, um, anything like that. Uh, that said, R, you know, you got pretty close, but, uh, you were saved by these, uh, these ladies who you just met, uh, Juniper, uh, kind of kneeling over you as she has healed you. Uh, and she says, uh, thanks for helping us. Uh, thanks for not letting me die. And I look over to Violet and I'm like, um, I'm sorry for taking your revenge from you. Um, it's fine. Actually, I owe you one with this. You're cool, you're cool, you're cool dude, man. <laughs> Am I cool, Bertrand? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you lean out the door, and Bertram's actually already waiting outside the door, um, like, like, blocking crowds of people from trying to get in. As he kind of turns his head, he's, like, blocking crowds of people, um, and he says, Oh, what's going on? Um, I'm gonna like quite quietly tell him that I need like body cleanup in the VIP room. Okay, roll me a stealth check, please. Okay. Um, where is my stealth? There it is. Okay. Not great. <laughs> All right. Um, as you uh, as you say that, someone in the crowd goes, "Body cleanup? What do you mean body cleanup?" And a few people in the crowd start like whispering back and forth and Bertram oh. kind of stomps his foot and he slowly kind of um, waves you to shut the door and you hear Bertram's voice say, all right, everybody out, everybody out. People start kind of pouring out of the club. Um, as that happens, uh, you're, you hear kind of the crowds kind of dispersing um, and as they're, as they're leaving, the sounds of their voices kind of fade into the distance, um, leaving you a good window here to try and clean up the bodies. What is your plan? You want to just try and drag them downstairs? Yeah, I'm going <clears> to <throat> try and get some of my, me and my other staff members to yep. like help me drag them to where they're supposed to go. 
Yeah. Um, I guess like if the rest of the the parties watching, they would they'd probably get the impression that there's some kind of system to this. Um, but yeah, and then I'm gonna sort of like turn to them, and be like, uh, "I'll I'll be back," and then like shut the door to like the lower levels and lock it behind me. Okay. Once the bodies are all like cleared up. All right, so um, Leanna, Esme, Violet, and Juniper, as you guys are watching, R seems to have a um, a system down on disposing of bodies in the club, which might be a bit alarming to you. Uh, might be a bit strange that that is a system that's in place, but it is. And um, as she does her work to kind of uh, complete this endeavor, you also notice as you're coming out of the, the VIP room, you notice... Kaylee, the bartender, she is like handing drinks to people on their way out. And R, you you recognize these drinks. These drinks are kind of like um they're kind of like the the little men in black taser thing. They make people forget about things. Um they're really good at like making people just like totally forget um what they're uh, what they what they did that night. And so um she's handing up she's like, free drinks on the house for everybody. Oh my god, you oh <laughs> look at you look at your hair. She kind of like ruffles the hair of someone who's like like kind of mumbling on his breath, like bodies, what kind of bodies? He's like, come here, take a sip of this. This is free. It's free, totally free on the house. And like, she's kind of like uh, ushering people out and she says, oh my God, oh my God, you guys are so messy. Oh, you're so messy. She like pushes people out um, as they're drinking their drinks and they're like, huh, wow, this is really good. What were we talking about? No, oh, I don't remember what we were talking about. And they kind of like exit their way out of the, uh, out of the club. Um, you're not sure if you got all of them though. Are. You're not sure if you got all of them, but um, Kaylee did her best. Um, she she kind of knows the drill uh, on, um, you know, she doesn't know everything about your club by any means. Uh, but what she does know is that if Bertram tells her to make one of these special drinks, she makes it for whatever people are trying to forget about. Um, and she's pretty, she's pretty like, she's kind of, she's kind of an airhead, Kaylee. Uh, she's like really, really, you know, kind and, and uh, fun to be around, but she's also not very perceptive in terms of like uh, what you have going on behind the scenes. So uh, she uh, she has not really caught on to why she's making the drink. She's just doing her job, you know, and she's having fun talking with people and that kind of thing. Um, she hasn't seemed to really catch on. Uh, but she does say she kind of flags you down um, as uh, you're like kind of ordering people around and having them drag bodies. Um, you have them like wrapped up in these, you know, bags that you have created and those kinds of things so um it's something she's kind of seen before and of course uh she's really not paying attention to it as she instead just asks you hey um hey r where's um where's prince lawrence i was gonna get his um i was gonna get his information tonight um he asked me out actually earlier and i i don't know i i mean i, I could use like some money you know well i, I feel like i like go, go into my pocket and like bring out like I guess like 10 gold and I put it in her, her palm and I'm like, Kaylee, my dear, he's not worth your time. She, uh, she kind of like rolls her eyes and she says, you don't have to watch out for me all the time. Like, I know what I'm doing. Like, you don't have to like, <laughs> she kind of like, <laughs> she takes Take the my head and sort of like, yeah, <laughs> go back to the group. And I guess, um, I'm like, I, I don't know what you'd want to, if you want to do anything with Prince Lawrence's body before we, take it away but uh, it's up to you does anyone have anything they want to do with prince lawrence's body no oh i have something in mind <laughs> but like i'm not sure if it's possible so like can we have it delivered to the house now? <laughs> <laughs> like to the castle or is that just i think that's like that's us digging our graves <laughs> I mean, it is like already dug, I guess. Right, like why does all go big or go home, you know? <laughs> Ooh, ah, okay. You know what? I'll pass. I'll pass. I don't want to. No, try you anything. guys can talk about it. It's up to you. Do you <laughs> do you want to try and like send it as a message back to the kingdom of Midas or no? Do it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's not. It's not our trauma, Violet. It's yours. Mm -hmm. 
then you know what i'll do exactly what he used to do to me i'll just kick the ashes to the side <laughs> all right so uh no delivering happening then nah i i'm not a psychopath it's fine <laughs> It's okay if you are. This is the campaign for it. Murder him. You know, I, you know, I'm crazy, but not in that way. <laughs> she was crazier we, than him. He was like, her. You know, I'm not like the other girls. Not I'm different. Joker. I'm worse. <laughs> oh, no. All right. So, um, are you yeah. uh, bring the bodies down to the lower level, um, kind of using your. Uh, back way elevators and pulley systems mm -hmm. to get them where they need to be, uh, which is like a large cremation system uh that mm -hmm. does like a little bit of the heating for the uh for the um club as well as uh produces like energy for the lights and things like that um so quite a bit of cremation going on down there um you guys uh as you head down to the lower level i would like the group here uh which other than r to roll me a perception check as you head down to the lower level which is another club but this one is darker um and um has this like Really, really dense sense of like irony, irony smell as you're rolling perception checks here. Why, um, check Prince Lawrence's pockets before we dispose of him? Yeah, roll me an investigation check. Mammal's rich, he's got to have something good, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is true. Um, are we having any other perception checks from uh, from Leanna? I got a seven for Juniper. Oh, 22. Nice. Okay. Um, so this is where we're going to leave off for today. Um, first things first, with a 10 investigation check, R, and looking through Prince Lawrence's pockets, you find a few things. Um, first of all, you, you take the rings off of his fingers, which in total are worth about 300 gold pieces or 30 wow. platinum. Um, his crown itself is probably by itself worth about 250 gold pieces. Um, but if someone figures out or you're able to sell to somebody that it's, it's the crown of the Prince of Midas, um, it might be worth more. Uh, but just as by itself, like the item, it's worth uh, 250 gold pieces to someone who knows nothing about it. Um, mm -hmm. And then lastly, uh, in his pockets, you find one amulet with a chain mm -hmm. Um, the amulet is the symbol of the kingdom of Midas, which is like, um, it's like this golden dove basically. And then, uh, that you're not sure how much it's worth, but it also could be useful as like, a a bargaining tool or a tool to get you into places. Um, it's like a symbol more than anything else. Uh, and then lastly, you find a note from, um, from the kingdom and it seems like it is, um, kind of scribbled with all of his different his notes like he's written on it a bunch of times like in a bunch of different ways um and it basically has like names of people who have wronged him you can tell um he's like fuck this bitch and he's got like a name and he's got like this dude didn't pay me he's got a name um so he's got a like basically a list of people who um he wanted to either get back at or who are, he already fucked over their lives you're not sure um but he had basically like a hit list like a mean girl's hit list <laughs> Jesus, I don't. I no longer feel bad about him dying. I never I did know. anyway. But <laughs> and uh, as you flip it open, in the middle of this note, written in huge words, is Violet with a bunch of circles around it. Oh my God, that's me! Yeah, I hand the note to Violet, and I'm like, hey. oh, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna frame this when I get home. <laughs> um. With the, the last thing we'll say with these perception checks, so that was the investigation for your his body and, like, getting the stuff off his body. For the perception checks of everyone who isn't R, so the perception checks of Violet, Esme, Liana, and Juniper. Um, firstly, Esme, um, you notice down here in the, in the dark club that a lot of the people um, have a... Uh, like, half the people down here in the club are sweating, and the other half aren't sweating at all. Um, and they seem like they've all been down here for quite a while, like partying it up. Um, they're intoxicated by some kind of, um, almost aura that's down here in this, in this lower level of the club. Violet, um, you can tell that this, uh, aura is being given off by 
what seems to be like this almost all encompassing crowd aura it's like it's like keeping people down here and like making them want to drink and party and like you almost feel pulled into it as you as you come down here you feel pulled into like wanting to go dance and you know um enjoy yourself and have a drink like but you kind of you kind of pull yourself away from it um by being able to see that it seems seems almost magical in some way and then liana with the 22 um the last thing i'll say is as the people are partying um you're actually able to see with the 22 kind of near the middle of the dance floor you see a a beautiful looking woman dressed in this red gown as she's like dancing and grinding on this guy she leans over to his to her to his neck and these two fangs <laughs> pop out and she bites into his neck and you see some of the blood coming out of his neck as he smiles and he's dancing with her and he's smiling as his eyes kind of close and he droops and you see that he's probably dead um, and now you may realize why there is a body disposal system here as you look over at R and you see her kind of pale skin uh, giving off little light in this area that is where we're going to end it for today oh my god Sure. <laughs> so sure. you have uh, a new friend that uh, might be super useful, but also could be kind of <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> <laughs>